time of year, a lot of people are out buying some Freon for that air conditioning system in their vehicle that's not up to speed. So the question is, have you accidentally bought the fake stuff? Does it work and is it even safe? Well, let's find out. We'll add the refrigerant and we'll see if this stuff actually works. We'll also test the safety of both products. At a price of only $10, is this SuperTech R134 Freon? This is the real stuff and not the fake stuff. This is a 12 ounce can of Freon. And a SuperTech is made in USA. Just about all the Freon on the market today comes in a self-sealing can like this one. It requires a special kind of adapter that allows the Freon to flow out of the can. This style of fitting works with a self-sealing can. The tip of the adapter is rounded and blunt. If you have a regular set of manifold gauges from a while back, the fitting or adapter might not work with a self-sealing can. So it might be tempting to buy a can of Freon that uses a puncture style system. The adapter on the bottom is designed to puncture the can. This 2003 Chevrolet's air conditioning system is fully charged with this SuperTech R134A and not the fake stuff. If you don't have a set of gauges, you only need a low pressure gauge to determine if your car's air conditioning system is at the proper pressure. The car's air conditioning system does have to be at rest and cooled off to the same temperature as the outside air. So let's establish our baseline performance before we test out the fake stuff. Before we start the vehicle, let's attach the low side pressure gauge and measure the pressure. The ambient temperature is just below 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So the static pressure of a fully charged system should be around 84 to 85 PSI. And the system is fully charged at around 85 to 86 PSI of static pressure. Let's test the vent temperature with the vehicle parked. According to the infrared thermometer, the temperature is around 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And a thermal imaging camera is probably a little bit more accurate at around 43 degrees. Driving down the road, more air is passing through the condenser and the air temperature is a little bit colder at around 40 to 41 degrees. The thermal imaging camera is showing in the high 30s. So this is some very cold air. Let's go ahead and recover the Freon. I need to first purge the Freon tank of any moisture. I'll hook up a set of gauges and a vacuum pump to the recovery tank. The vacuum pump is going to create negative pressure inside the tank. At negative 29.92 inches of mercury, water boils at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And there's quite a bit of water vapor coming from the vacuum pump. So it's making good progress at boiling off the moisture. And the gauge is showing very close to 30 inches of mercury and it's been several minutes. The tank should now be free of any sort of contamination and the Freon should be safe to recapture inside the tank. I'll go ahead and close off the valve in the recovery tank to prevent moisture from entering the tank. Let's go ahead and connect a set of gauges to the high and the low side Schrader valves. The Freon recovery machine did come with a filter. I'll connect the filter before the Freon enters the recovery machine to protect the equipment and to clean the Freon. The hose from the gauges connect to the recovery pump inlet port. Let's go ahead and weigh the recovery tank empty. And it's right at 15.19 pounds. I'll attach a hose from the outlet to the recovery tank. I'll go ahead and zero out the scale. I'll open both the low and the high pressure valves on the manifold. And the Freon is flowing to the recovery machine. I'll rotate the dial on the recovery machine to the recovery position which will allow the Freon to flow to the tank. I still have the inlet valve on the tank closed. I'll go ahead and purge the air that's inside the lines in the recovery machine to avoid contaminating the Freon that we're about to recover. And the lines in the machine are purged. So let's open the valve on the recovery tank to begin recovering the Freon. Even though the machine isn't powered on yet, there's enough pressure from inside the car system to begin adding Freon into the recovery tank. The weight scale is set to pounds. And the tank has already gained about two tenths of a pound of R134 Freon. I'll go ahead and power up the Freon recovery machine to continue the recovery process. I started the machine in the slow recovery mode but moved the dial clockwise to speed up the recovery rate. It's doing well with the adjustment without any abnormal sounds. So I'll go ahead and advance the machine to the fast recovery mode. And the Freon recovery machine recovered very close to three pounds of R134 Freon in around 15 minutes. And the gauges are now showing suction. So all the R134 Freon has been removed from the vehicle. I'll go ahead and switch the recovery machine over to purge to purge all the air from the recovery machine. All the air has been purged from the machine, so I'll go ahead and close the valves on the gauge set. And we're all finished with the recovery machine in the tank for now. I'll remove the tank to make space for the vacuum pump, but I'll leave the recovery machine in place to serve as a holder for the gauges. We definitely do not want to mix any R134 with the non-R134 refrigerant. So I'll go ahead and use a vacuum pump to remove anything else that's still in the system. And the gauges are now showing very close to 30 inches of mercury. So we should be able to add this alternative refrigerant. At a price of around $8 per can, is this Zero R, which is not actual R134 refrigerant, it's some sort of substitute gas. A lot of people are buying this stuff thinking it's R134. They say it's equivalent to 16 ounces of R134. This product claims to be eco-friendly. And the Zero R is made in USA. Use standard R134 installation tools. Refrigerant must be installed through the low pressure service port. I'll use the puncture style adapter to open the can of Zero R. 
The can is open, so I'll go ahead and purge the system of any remaining air in the lines. Make sure the compressor is running before installing the product into the system. Invert the can while charging. The product must be installed in a liquid state. Adding the first can of Zero R refrigerant is a pretty slow process as it took a while before the vehicle's compressor powered on. And the first can of Zero R is empty, so let's add another can. I'll close the low side pressure valve before I disconnect the empty refrigerant can. The new can is in place and I've opened a second can. I'll go ahead and purge the line of any air that entered the low pressure line when I remove the empty can. And there's quite a bit of pressure on the low pressure side at around 75 PSI and we're adding this product as a liquid. Hopefully we're not doing any damage to the compressor. And the second can of Zero R is empty. So let's test the vent temperature before we add a third can of Zero R. And the vent temperature just isn't doing too well at around 65 degrees Fahrenheit so we need to add another can. And the low pressure side on the third can is starting off pretty high at around 80 PSI. The vehicle does hold around 3 pounds of Freon so a third can should be plenty. And the day is still early and the temperature is still pretty mild at around 80 2 degrees Fahrenheit. According to the chart for R134, the low pressure side should be no more than 50 PSI and the high side should be around 175 to 210. However, this is an R134 and it's behaving differently as you might expect. And the low pressure side is at 50 PSI, which is on the higher side of normal, and the high pressure side is lower than it should be. And the vent temperature just doesn't seem to be too impressive at around 62 degrees. However, we are sitting still and this refrigerant will probably perform a lot better once the air is moving across the condenser. So let's go for a drive. And we're up to speed at close to 45 miles per hour. And the extra air moving across the condenser is really helping with the vent temperature at around 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So the Zero R refrigerant, which is not R134, actually did better than expected once the vehicle was moving and the compressor was at a higher RPM. So let's go ahead and drain the Zero R into a different recovery tank since we don't want to mix this gas with R134. I've already pulled a vacuum on this recovery tank. I'll go ahead and purge the line of air before we add the Zero R to the recovery tank. And it took a total of around 13 minutes for the recovery machine to extract all the Zero R from the system. Before we test out the next brand, how exactly does a car's air conditioning system work? The process is driven by the AC compressor, which compresses the refrigerant gas, raising its pressure and temperature. This high pressure, high temperature gas is then sent to the condenser. At the condenser, the hot refrigerant gas releases heat to the outside air. For the system to work efficiently, air has to pass through the condenser from the help of a fan or air movement that's generated when the vehicle is traveling down the road. As it cools, it condenses into a high pressure liquid. In my specific vehicle, the high pressure liquid refrigerant flows through an orifice tube. The orifice tube restricts the flow of refrigerant, causing a significant drop in pressure. This pressure drop causes the refrigerant to cool rapidly and partially vaporize, resulting in a cold low pressure mist. The cold low pressure refrigerant mist enters the evaporator located inside the car's dashboard. As warm air from the car's interior blows over the evaporator fins, the refrigerant absorbs the heat and evaporates. This process cools the air which is then blown into the passenger compartment through the AC vents. The accumulator, located between the evaporator and the compressor, collects any liquid refrigerant to prevent it from reaching the compressor. If liquid did reach the compressor, it could cause some damage. The accumulator also contains a desiccant to remove moisture from the refrigerant. The low pressure gas, after leaving the evaporator, returns to the compressor to be compressed again. So this is how the process works in a setup that uses an orifice tube and an accumulator. At a price of around $11 per can is this R134A replacement, which is made by LeakSaver. A lot of people are buying this stuff thinking it's R134. And the LeakSaver is made in USA. Just like the Zero R can, this one also requires a puncture type adapter. It claims to be a suitable replacement for R134A refrigerant. They claim that this equals 21 ounces of regular R134A. They claim it's designed to work in cars, trucks, and other types of equipment that has refrigeration. They say that it's very important to check and to repair all leaks before charging. We'll see why having a leak in the AC system might be a huge problem. The leak saver claims to be non-ozone depleting and has zero global warming potential. They say it allows the compressor to run smoother and have improved cooling and performance properties. We've already recaptured all the Zero R, but I still need to pull a vacuum on the system just to make sure there's no remaining moisture. And the system is ready for the leak saver refrigerant. Just as I did with the Zero R, I'll go ahead and use a puncture style adapter with the leak saver. I'll keep the can in the upright position while I purge the air from the hoses. The vehicle is running and the air conditioner is set to run on the coldest and highest setting. I've opened the low pressure side and the high pressure side will remain closed while adding the leak saver refrigerant. I've already tested the system for leaks and the system does not leak. And the low pressure side is at close to 80 PSI and it's going in as a liquid per the manufacturer's instructions. One thing nice about this alternative to R134 is that it does go in the system pretty quickly. About two to three minutes to add the entire can. Adding a self-sealing can of R134 typically takes a little longer. 
This is a larger can than the Zero R and it claims to have more capacity. So let's see how the AC is doing after just one can. And it's really beginning to warm up inside the shop and the vent temperature is pretty warm at around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go ahead and add a second can. I definitely don't want to purge this hose near any ignition source. And the low side pressure is at close to 90 PSI at the beginning of the charging process for the second can. And it only took about a minute to add the second can which is quite a bit faster than adding the R134 from a self-sealing can. And the ambient temperature inside the shop is in the high 80s and the vent temperature is in the low 60s. The low side pressure is around 52 to 53 PSI, which is about as high as I'm comfortable going with considering this is a flammable gas. The manufacturer claims a lower head pressure using this refrigerant, and that is indeed the case at only around 85 PSI. I think the AC system is going to perform a lot better with the higher compressor RPM and more air moving across the condenser. And we're heading down the highway at around 55 miles per hour, and it's almost 90 degrees outside. And the leak saver is actually doing better than expected at around 51 to 52 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're back at the shop. So let's drain out the leak saver and recharge the system with R134A to see if the system is still working properly. I'll use the same recovery tank that we used with the Zero R. The system has been drained, so I'll go ahead and pull a vacuum on the system once again, just to make sure that there's no leak saver still in the system. And the R134 comes in these self-sealing cans. So I'll use the adapter designed for self-sealing cans with the blunt tip. And this vehicle holds right at three pounds of Freon. Unlike the alternative refrigerants, R134 is supposed to be added with the valve facing up as a gas. So I'll go ahead and add four of these 12 ounce cans. Facing the valve downward adds the refrigerant as a liquid and that could cause damage to the compressor. I just added three pounds of Freon and the system is now at 45 PSI on the low side, which is pretty close to where it should be. And the high side pressure is around 185 PSI, which is a little low. Let's go ahead and shut down the vehicle and allow the AC to cool for several hours so we can check the static pressure. It's really warmed up inside the shop at 93 degrees and the static pressure is around 109 PSI, which is pretty close. And the vent temperature is pretty cool at around 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So the R134 seems to be doing a better job with the vehicle sitting still. And we're back on the highway and the vehicle is once again at 55 miles per hour. And the vent temperature is around 43 to 44 degrees, which is pretty good. I'm at a very safe distance and I'm using a propane nozzle, which is equipped with a proper check valve, pressure relief valve, and flame arrestor. So this is a very safe setup for testing the flammability of the leak saver. And the leak saver refrigerant is indeed flammable and it has a nice blue flame like you'd expect from natural gas or propane. I definitely wouldn't recommend using this type of refrigerant in your AC system of your vehicle unless it's specifically designed for flammable gas. Just like the leak saver, the Zero R is also some sort of natural gas that has a blue flame. Probably not a good idea to use a leak saver or the Zero R in an air conditioning system with a leak. In fairness to both brands, both brands do indicate that their product is not R134 and it's some sort of natural gas replacement that's highly flammable. However, people left comments saying that they purchased these products not realizing that they were made of natural gas. When it comes to air conditioning refrigerant, it's buyer beware. Do you have any video ideas regarding sketchy products or counterfeit products that would be of interest? I'm always looking for video ideas and all the videos on this channel are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.